So first things first, we need to make sure that we've got everything going. We can hear audio, and if we're using a MIDI controller, we're making sure that we're receiving MIDI data. So we're going to take our first trip to the Preferences menu, which we'll, we'll navigate to quite a bit. Um, you can just go up to the top, select Live, hit Preferences on this drop-down menu. And you can see when we're looking at these menus on the right-hand side, we're given what is a shortcut or a key command to access this. So I'm on a Mac, and to get to the preferences, I would use command comma. If you're on a PC, it's going to be a different set of key commands, but you'll see this a lot as you navigate through. And using key commands is a, a really fast way to start moving around. So here we are in the preferences menu. On the left-hand side, these are the different tabs we have access to. If we want to see where audio is coming in and out of, this is the link or the MIDI section, which is where we're going to make sure our MIDI controllers are all set up. And there's a lot of different areas here on the preferences menu. Right now, we want to be taking a look at this link MIDI menu. So down below here, this is where our MIDI ports are being shown. Anything that's currently plugged into our computer in Ableton is acknowledging that, yes, there is something plugged in here. So you can see that this is listed as an LPK25, which is the name of this tiny little MIDI controller that I'm using to record MIDI. It's listed as an input and an output, and then I can turn track, sync, or remote on or off. So what I want you to do is to turn track on and remote on for any of these. So without getting too deeply into the details here, if I've got track selected, it's going to allow me to track MIDI or to record MIDI using this MIDI controller. And then the remote option is going to let me use my MIDI, MIDI controller as a remote control, um, which has to do with a uh, functionality called MIDI mapping, which is really cool and, and special in Ableton, and you're going to want to do that. So just make sure track and remote are on with either the input or the output for your controller. And then once we've got this selected, I'm going to exit the Preferences menu here. And then we're going to take a look up in this tiny little corner up here. There's two gray boxes. And I'm going to hit a key on my MIDI controller, and there should be a yellow light that's flashing in the top right-hand side. That's live telling me I've got MIDI information coming into me. And that's really important to make sure we have set up. If I go to the left a little bit here, you're going to see that there's a keyboard icon. If I turn this on, that's going to allow me to use my computer's keyboard as a tracking surface. So now if I hit A, any of the keys in this row here, A, S, D, F, you're also seeing this little light flash as well, since I'm sending MIDI information from my computer's keyboard into Ableton as well. And each of us has access to different things. Some of us do have MIDI controllers. Some of us don't have MIDI controllers. But the beautiful thing is that it doesn't matter. We can still make music in live. You can use your computer's keyboard. And I'll show you a lot of ways in order to create um, MIDI and record audio without any external hardware. The next thing we need to make sure we're doing is routing audio properly so that we can hear audio coming out of our computer speakers, if we have external speakers, whatever you have access to, let's make sure that audio is routed properly. So back to the Preferences menu we go, Live. Here we are in the Preferences menu. And then this time, I'm going to select Audio. So on this tab, first of all, we're just going to take a look at this top part of the menu where the selecting our audio input and our audio output. So an input is going to be a place that's bringing audio into live, right? And maybe that's the built-in microphone on your computer. Maybe that's an input on an external audio interface that you have selected. I'm going to leave this as no device right now since I don't have anything um, connected to my computer. And then here is the output. So I've got this selected. And you can see here are all the different options I have. So if you're using the built-in output on your computer, I want you to select built-in output. If you have an external interface plugged in, I want you to select that as well from the drop-down menu here. So whatever it is that you're using, select that. Exiting the Preferences menu now, just to make sure that we are monitoring and receiving audio, we're going to go up to the metronome here and turn it on. So it's these two little dots. And if it's gray, it's off. And if it's yellow, that means that the metronome is on. And then we're going to press spacebar. And if we've done this properly, you should hear the metronome coming out of your speakers. Mm -hmm. 
So we've done this. I've got audio, and I'm also receiving MIDI data, so we are totally ready to take the next step and start making some music. Thank <laughs> you.